Hi, my name is Paul and welcome to Physics High. Now, when we're dealing with law of conservation momentum problems in two dimensions, then to solve them, you can do one of two ways. One is the vectorial way by simply drawing a vector diagram. And the other one is looking at the component way. Today, I'm gonna to deal specifically with the component way. And the big advantage of using the component way is, is that when you draw vectors and you've got more than three vectors, it becomes rather problematic to solve vectorially. Whereas with components, you can have as many vectors as you want. You just break them up into the horizontal and vertical components and solve them individually and then work out the solution from there. Well, how does that work? Well, I'm gonna take you through an example. So in this case, we have an example where we have a plate that is dropped down vertically and smashes into three pieces and they fly off into different directions. Now, because of the fact that this is just a simple case, we're not worrying about the actual aspect that the piece of the plate can bounce up and down. We're just gonna say that we're just gonna treat what happens when they move off horizontally. So we're gonna ignore that vertical component of the dropping and just as, and treat that the momentum initially in terms of the horizontal one is going to be zero. So let's quickly draw the diagram that what we have. So given all that information, can we now solve what the total mass of the plate was by working out what the mass one and mass two is? And we do this by using the component method. In other words, what we do is we treat this plane, the X plane separately to the vertical plane and do them independently. And so we basically apply the conservation of momentum to both of those situations. So what we have is our X component first, and then we're going to also be dealing with the Y as well. So let's start with the X first. Well, the momentum before the collision for both situations is going to be zero. So we're going to start here. Let's deal with the X first. We've got to get Z zero, and then we've got MV of all three of them. But remember, only the X components. So the M we don't know, so that's going to be M1. The velocity, of course, is given. In this case, it's three. And then, of course, we only want the component that's in this component. Now, traditionally, we measure the angle from the horizontal line or the X line. And if that's 25, that's 65. So what we have now is cosine 65. But this is negative because it's heading in that direction. So I'm going to make this a negative. And then, of course, I do the same thing for M2. So I have M2 multiplied by its velocity, which is 1.79. And then, of course, I multiply by its component, which is cosine 45. So what we end up is getting 3m1 cosine 65 is equal to 1.79m2 cosine 45. So that's the first equation. And by the way, you notice that I've left off this one because it has no component in the x direction. Now let's deal with the y component. So we have 0 is equal to in this case, we have this one here, which is our M1, multiplied by, of course, our three, and multiplied by, in this case, we want the component that is in the upward direction, and that's gonna be equal to the sine of 65. And then we've gotta add this one as well, which is equal to M2, multiplied by, by 1.79, multiplied by the sine of 45. But now we also have to add this one as well because there is actually a Y component, but this is negative because it's heading down. Now in this case, we know the mass, so we might as well just put that straight in, 1.3 multiplied by my 3.07. You now see I have got two equations and two unknowns, and you can solve that obviously by elimination or substitution. But I do wanna show you something that will make life very, very easy. You see I have here 1.79 M2 cosine 45, and over here I have M2 1.79 sine 45. Well, they happen to be exactly the same thing because the sine of 45 is equal to the cosine of 45. So what I can do is I can clean this up. So I'm gonna take this, which is my 1.3 multiplied by my 3.07 on this side of the equation, and then what I have here is I have 3m1 sine 65 plus, but remember this here is equal to that there. I can replace that so I can actually use this. So I have 3m1 cosine 65. So in other words, this is equal to 
m1 outside of sine 65 plus cosine 65. Now remember we're interested in m1, so m1 ends up being equal to this value, which is 3.991 divided by 3 outside of sine 65 plus the cosine of 65. And that gives us 1.001 .001 kilogram. Now for the fact that we're doing a little bit of rounding out here, that really means mass one is one kilogram. Now, now that I've worked out mass one, I can obviously then take that and substitute that into one of these equations to work out the second mass. Well, the second mass ends up being 1.003. Again, what we're saying is that is really just one kilogram. So now we have the final answer. The total mass of my plate is the one plus the one plus the 1 1.3. So my total mass is equal to 3.3 kilogram. There you have it. Now, I could make this question a lot more complex. For example, let's say I have a moving plate that is moving, let's say, upwards and that broke up into four pieces, all in different directions. If you drew the diagram, remember that the total momentum before equals the total momentum afterwards, but you can treat them in each of the plane. And that is actually even true in a three-dimensional sense. That is, if you have an object that is moving in three-dimensional space, and it breaks up into multiple components, when you break them up into their components, their you know, X, their Y, and even in their Z, that that's the, beyond the scope of usually high school students, you can mathematically work out the total momentum by simply adding those components together. So that is the component method. And in fact, you can solve many problems using the component method. So for example, if you're doing relative velocity type problems, again, by simply working out the X's and the Y's, that is the horizontal directions and the Y directions, you can solve things uh, simply by breaking it up into the components. Well, I hope that has helped you understand the conservation momentum. Please have to check out my website as well and, and remember to like, share and subscribe. My name is Paul from Physics High. Bye for now.